The Parliament has approved the 2021 budget statement after the matter was put to a head count. This was after the minority once again failed to rally all its 137 members to show up in the chamber for the vote. In the end, the statement passed by 137-134 with the minority not having the benefit of three of its members. The House is expected to resume on Saturday to consider the estimates contained in the budget and what has been allocated to each ministry or agency. The matter was either forced to a head count after the minority challenged an earlier ruling by the first deputy speaker that the statement had passed in the voice note vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All against say no. no. I think the eyes have it. Let's go! 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 let by Mr. Speaker, what the 113, that when the, the question has been put by Mr. Speaker at the conclusion of the debate, the vote shall be taken by voices, the eyes and the no, provided that Mr. Speaker may him his discretion instead of declaring the result on the voice vote call for a head count. Mr. Speaker, 1132, a member may call for headcount or division if the opinion of Mr. Speaker on the votes is challenged. Mr. Speaker, I'm challenging your ruling on the voice vote for a head count. and I'm calling for a headcount. Shortly after making the demand, Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagbing returned to take the seat and agreed to the request for a headcount and directed the clerk to the House to proceed with a roll call. What the Deputy Minority Leader did amounted to a challenge. There was no further need for any expatiation of the situation because once you disagree with the decision, and even use words like, I challenge your decision, and I'm coming on the order 1132. That suffices. That is enough indication that one side disagrees with the decision of the speaker. And so we we'll proceed to do a head count. Now, because of the numbers, because of the numbers in the House, we will adopt the same procedure we did during the head count of the, of the ministers. And therefore, members will be seated, and when your name is pronounced, then you stand to be marked. The matter was eventually put to a head count and the minority lost again. The eyes, one, three, seven. Eight, 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 eight. The nose, one, three, four. Hey. <laughs> Honorable members, clearly the eyes have it. The motion 
is accordingly adopted. The majority MPs are unhappy their colleagues forced the matter into a headcount. Well, of course, I mean, it was obvious that uh, the good people of Ghana need this all-important budget, budget for government business to roll. And I think the majority, a minority knew, even before they, they set, they challenged the decision of the speaker, that obviously they were not going to get a vote. But I think what is important for us as a country, at this time of our development, we cannot afford to stagger government business. And for me... We'll bring you the views of the majority in a bit. But the minority has said no. To, it will always demand a head count during voting going forward. We in the minority, we are successful today in the sense that... You were successful today? Yes, we were. You lost um, by three votes? No, it's not about just winning or losing. Okay. It's about what you get out. Right. Yes, the Ministry of Finance, led by the acting minister, have indeed accepted that they are going to amend the fiscal framework. Our point has always been that we've had concerns with how the fiscal framework has been presented. We think it has been distorted. We think the right impressions are not created. We think we have a number of expenditures that are missing from the framework. And so if you had to look at, listen to me from the beginning, we've made the point that the deficit as reported in the budget statement is understated. The deficit of 11.7% is not a true situation. If you are to add the financial sector 13.8, it's not the true situation. In fact, the true the situation is 15.3% of GDP on cash basis. And if you are to add a rest, it's 17.5% of GDP. Gradually, the minister responsible for finance, the Honorable Chair or Sir Chairman Sabun, who has admitted and said to us that he's going to amend that. That is a major victory, not only to minority, but to, uh, to, oh, to the you, you, no, no, Knowing very well that he said he was going to amend yes. the concerns yes. or address the concerns yes. you've raised. Yes. Why were your side seeking to block it by demanding for headcount where, where you know that? You see, um, the, the truth is, the fiscal policies are one. Um, uh, and remember, the fiscal policies include the revenue measures, of which we've said that we do not agree to some of them. So putting it to vote is important, sending a signal that that is going to be done. But you see, this is an important vote. Important vote for one reason. Important reason, a uh, vote in the sense that this will form the basis of us accepting or not accepting most of the policies in the budget statement. So now that it is clear, the majority members of the House has accepted some policies, then going into the appropriations, then you'll be guided by the sense of the House and then work accordingly. So I think it's an important vote and it's important that it happened this way. I don't be surprised that we vote on every single thing going forward. Every single thing going forward. Don't be surprised. Everyone is going to knew very well that we are currently in the COVID pandemic and we needed to approve the budget in order for government to run. I said every single thing, don't be surprised in the sense that if government fails to convince us that they are doing it in the interest of the nation, we will vote against it. Joining us on phone now is parliamentary correspondent Kwesi Parker Wilson. Kwesi, so the minority has lost yet another headcount, even though it could have at least managed to force it into a deadlock if it had all its members in the chamber. Which MPs were absent and do we know why? So three members of the NDC were absent in parliament today. The host central MP, Benjamin Kodo, the Bia West MP, Augustine Teria, and the KEEA, that is commended now, Equafra Brim MP, and Samuel Akamil, were all absent today. Now, for Benjamin Kodo, we have been told that he's bereaved, he lost the mother some days ago, and currently, as we speak, he is in the constituency uh, going through with the funeral arrangement, and that is why he was absent. Uh, from Parliament today. For Augustine Terrier, we are told that he's seriously ill and for like three or four days now, he hasn't been in Parliament. And so they knew that obviously today he wasn't going to be in Parliament. But for Samuel Atamios, the leadership did not know why he absented himself from Parliament today. So these are the three members of Parliament uh, who were not present uh, for today's proceedings, which of course uh, made the NDC lose the headcount 
uh, to the, uh, their colleagues on the MPP side. Now, the majority is unhappy that the minority seems to be forcing everything into a headcount, even though the minority is insisting that it will continue to force these things into a headcount. What has been the reaction over the position taken by the ma majority on this? Well, um, Israel, I must say that they are quite upset. They are instinct with the conduct of the minority in parliament today. Uh, they talked about the exigencies of the budget, knowing very well how COVID had delayed a uh, parliamentary session. And you know that parliament was on suspension for a few weeks just because of the outbreak of COVID-19 in the House. And so the time has come for members of the House to approve the budget so that at least government can run the activities or the programs that they committed in the budget statement. And so if you seek to block it, if you seek to reject the budget, then perhaps you are being an obstructionist. In fact, that is the word used by the majority, that the minority is trying to be obstructionist and gradually sabotaging the activities of government. But then, um, going forward, they expect that they should conduct themselves in a way that would serve the interests of the people of this country and not just the NDC. So, Kwesi, what's next with the budget? So, we are now waiting for the budget estimate. Today, we're told that the report was laid before the House. Now, this budget estimate now will tell us how much government is committing to the various projects they talked about in the budget statement. And the 8 uh, um, district hospitals, the seven regional hospitals, what, how much do we need? Um, more, less, that is what the, 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 the parliament will be looking at. So they will be referred to the various committees, and the committees will now review and debate for or against the amount being allocated to the various ministries and the agencies. So that is what we need to wait for for next week. And that would be uh, happening on Monday, uh, because tomorrow we are told that they are going to refer all the allocations to the various uh, committees for them to quickly sit on the issues and file their report by the end of the uh, by the end of next week. All right, thank you very much, uh, Kwesi Parker Wilson, our parliamentary correspondent. Thank you.